Hi, I am Aurel Enriquez, and this presentation contains our discussion on the heart. This is also the second segment of our discussion on the cardiovascular system. The heart is a very important organ and component of the cardiovascular system because it pumps the blood. Without the heart, blood wouldn't flow, blood wouldn't circulate throughout the body. So, hindi niya ma fulfill yung function niya, no? To, um, to transport nutrients, oxygen, and waste materials. So without the heart, uh, the blood would not be able to deliver or transport oxygen and nutrients. The three major components of the cardiovascular system are the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. So the heart would pump the blood, the blood would travel through the blood vessels, and the blood would deliver oxygen and nutrients to everybody else. This illustration shows us the cardiovascular system where the heart is located right here. Um, over here is the carotid artery, jugular vein, the aorta, which is right here, and the pulmonary trunk. So, bali, ito po yung mga main areas that we have to be familiar with kapag yung general structure po ng cardiovascular system ang pinag-uusapan. The heart is actually two different pumps that does two different motions that are pieced together into one organ. Okay, so yung right side po, it pumps the blood to the lungs. So yung direction na ito is called pulmonary circulation because it's literally circulating the blood towards the respiratory system. Yung left side naman po, it pumps the blood to all the other parts of the body. So yung direction naman na ito is referred to as the systemic circulation kasi papunta yung blood to all the other organ systems. The circulatory system has pulmonary circulation to the lungs and systemic circulation to the body. So blood from the heart, blood from the heart would circulate to move where oxygen is taken up and carbon dioxide is released, as we can see right here in this illustration. And then from the right side, from the right side, the blood would enter the left lung where oxygen is taken up and carbon dioxide is released to the outside. Listed here are the functions of the heart. First is to generate blood pressure. So yung blood pressure daw po natin ay nanggagaling sa motion of the heart. So how forceful, how slow, or fast the heart is pumping. Next, it routes the blood. Kasi ayun nga po, hindi naman po mag-flow yung blood natin through our blood vessels if the heart is not working. Next, it ensures a one-way blood flow. So later po, um, when we get to discuss um, the, the flow of the blood through the heart, dun po natin mas maiintindihan paano naging one-way ang blood flow natin. Next, it has the capability to regulate blood supply. So we'll talk more about this on the next few slides. Let's first talk about the physical characteristics of the heart. It's approximately the same size of your fist. Okay? So kung gaano daw po kalaki yung kamao ng isang tao, more or less ganun, daw, ganun din daw po yung size ng heart nila. And it weighs less than one pound. Okay? Now, in comparison, now just for comparison, the brain, now our brain, weighs approximately three pounds for a normal average person. Alright? So again, the heart approximately weighs less than one pound. Meanwhile, the brain would weigh approximately three pounds. So, mas matimbang pa rin po yung utak natin, diba? Both figuratively and literally. Next, um, the heart is located between our two lungs, right in the middle. All right, ulitin natin. The heart is located in the middle of our two lungs. Pero yung apex, no, or the slightly 
pointed part here at the bottom is leaning towards the left side. Okay? So, hindi po yung buong mismong heart yung nasa left side. Okay? Nasa gitna po talaga yung heart. It's just that a great portion of it is facing at the left side. Okay? This is why we usually detect the heartbeat on the left side and not on the right. Okay? So, ulitin natin. Um, with regards to the positioning of the heart, the heart is located in the middle, but the apex is pointing at the left side. Let's talk about the coverings of the heart. The pericardium has an outer fibrous pericardium and an inner serous pericardium. Okay, ulitin po natin. Outer fibrous, inner serous. Now, the serous pericardium includes a parietal pericardium and visceral pericardium. Okay, so yung parietal, um, you can find this around the heart's cavity, but the visceral pericardium is the one that is directly attached to the heart's surface. All right. Next, we have what is known as the epicardium. So the epicardium, this covers the heart's surface. And then in the middle of the epicardium and the parietal pericardium, meron pong space doon and that is referred to as the pericardial cavity. Alright? So, ayan. The pericardial cavity is filled with pericardial fluid which is supposed to be some form of cushioning around the heart. Okay? So, kung yung brain meron pong cerebrospinal fluid, yung heart naman po ay merong pericardial fluid. Let's now look at the outside of the heart or the external gross anatomy. So the coronary sulcus separates the atria from the ventricles. Okay, so ang naghahati daw po sa atria or yung upper portion ng heart and yung ventricles, which is nandun sa medyo lower portion, is the coronary sulcus. All right. Next, the anterior interventricular sul sulcus extends from the coronary sulcus, and then it also connects to the anterior surface of the heart. So we'll understand this better pagdingin po natin sa mga pictures mamaya. Next, the posterior interventricular sulcus, as you can tell by the name, it connects from the coronary sulcus and extends to the posterior of the surface of the heart. Then, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava would hold blood from the body to the right atrium. And then at the sides, the pulmonary veins would bring that blood to the lungs para maging oxygenated. The pulmonary trunk would separate the left and right pulmonary arteries. So, dito po dadaan yung blood, which would also bring it to the lungs. So, basta po may word na pulmonary sa name ng area, it would bring the blood towards the lungs. Next, the aorta connects from the left ventricle, and dito po dadaan yung blood na papunta na to everywhere else in the body. Alright, so shown here is the anterior view of the heart. And ito rin po yung pinaka-common na picture ng heart na makikita natin sa internet. So, ito rin po yung description natin kanina, di ba? The heart is located between the two lungs and then the apex, alright? The apex is pointed towards the left, alright? So, if you belong to my laboratory classes, no? So, wag po natin kakalimutan na aralin itong mga gross anatomical Parts and labels na nakikita po natin dito sa figure 12.5a. This illustration shows us a posterior view or yung likod daw po ng heart. So this is a bit less common no, na pinapakita sa atin sa mga um, references or photos ng heart na pwede natin isearch on the internet. But nonetheless, ayan po, wag din natin kakalimutang aralin ito. So again, this is the posterior view or yung likod na um, labels and parts no heart. Um, you would know that this is the posterior view kasi nakikita po natin, di ba? The apex is now pointed towards the other side or nasa right na siya wherein ang normal ay dapat nasa left side ng person. 
Let's now talk about the four chambers or the four hollow areas of the heart. We have the left and right atrium and then there's the left and right ventricle. So para po madaling tandaan and makikita rin naman po natin sa mga pictures mamaya, kapag sinabing atrium, nasa itaas. And kapag sinabi naman pong ventricle, nasa baba. Okay? We've already mentioned this earlier, yung coronary sulcus po. This is kind of like a wall that would divide the atria and ventricles. Or yung humaharang ng mga chambers na nasa itaas versus yung mga chambers na nasa ibaba. So again, that's the purpose of the coronary sulcus. This slide gives us a further description of the atria or yung mga atrium. All right, so they are the superior chambers. So tulad po na nabanggit natin kanina, no? superior meaning nasa itaas. So they receive blood from the veins. So yung blood po na tapos nang mag-circulate throughout the body, no? yung blood na wala ng oxygen, dito po pumupunta. So structurally, the atria are thin-walled. Manipis lang daw po yung cardiac muscles and tissues dito. Functionally, they only perform minimal contraction. Alright, so minimal effort lang daw po yung left and right atrium kung pumping of blood ang usapan. Because they only need to pump the blood to the ventricles or yung structure na nasa ibaba lang naman nila. Next, the interatrial septum, as the name implies, no, this is what divides the left and right atria. Again, interatrial septum, it separates the left and right atria. Let's now look further into the ventricles. These are the inferior chambers. So again, when we say inferior, it is located at the lower portion. So, nasa ibaba daw po ang mga ventricles. So, the ventricles would pump blood out of the heart to the arteries. So, the ventricles are thick and strong-walled. Mas makapal daw po yung cardiac muscles dito. This is important for their function kasi ang trabaho po ng ventricles is to forcefully push blood out of the heart and to everywhere else in the body. So, i-compare po natin ito sa mga atrium. The atrium, they only move blood to the ventricles, which is not a great distance, di ba? The ventricles is just right below the atrium, so less effort is needed. In comparison to the ventricles, they need to pump the blood to further distances, which, ay nga po, to everywhere else in the body outside of the heart. So, kung ang mga atrium ay may interatrial septum na naghahati sa kanila, the ventricles, they have the interventricular septum, which also divides the left and right ventricles. This slide enumerates the different atrioventricular heart valves. So, the atrioventricular valves of the heart are like um, openings in between the atria and ventricles. So, yung mga atrioventricular heart valves po, ito yung mga openings or daanan ng dugo galing sa atrium papunta sa ventricles. So, first, the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve is between the right atrium and ventricle. Next, the bicuspid valve. This is also referred to as the mitral valve. So it is between the left atrium and left ventricle. All right, so ulitin po natin. Kapag nasa right yung opening, it is referred to as the tricuspid valve. Kapag nasa left yung opening, this is otherwise referred to as the mitral valve or bicuspid valve. Now, how are heart valves controlled? Each ventricles have pillars called papillary muscles, and they are attached by strings of connective tissue known as chordae tendinae. So, dito po nang galing yung term na heart strings because these are literally strings made up of connective tissue that could be found in the heart. We also have what are known as semilunar heart valves. Ito naman po, um, ang hinaharangan nila ay yung mga ventricles and arteries. Okay? So, um, rewind natin sandali. No? The atrioventricular heart valves, they separate the atria from the ventricles. Pero, the semilunar heart valves, they separate the ventricles from the 
arteries. This slide right here shows us an anterior view of the cross section of the heart. So ito na po yung itsura no, on the inside. So ito po lahat ng structures na nabanggit natin kanina. Again, the atriums are at the top, nasa taas, and the ventricles are at the bottom or nasa ilalim. All right? Again, as we can see right here in this illustration, mas manipis din po yung outer walls ng atrium. Kasi nga po, di ba, minimal effort lang ang kailangan nila to pump the blood only towards the ventricles. And as we can see right here, the ventricles are much thicker in um, with regards no, to the amount of cardiac muscle that they have. Kasi nga, ang ventricles naman po, ang function nila is to pump the blood through the arteries and through the rest of the circulation. All right. So again, um, if you belong to my laboratory classes, wag pong kakalimutan aralin itong mga gross anatomical parts and labels na nakikita natin dito sa anterior view. This slide right here just shows us the anterior and superior view of the heart using actual no, actual anatomical samples or gross anatomical samples. So ito po hindi na sila illustration. They were taken from actual human samples. So ayun po, pinapakita lang sa atin kung nasaan yung location ng ventricles, kung anong itsura ng mga chordae tendinae. So again, chordae tendinae is otherwise referred to as our heart strings because literally they look like strings na nakikita po natin dito. And it also shows us the locations of the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve. This slide right here shows us um, an illustration of what it looks like if the bicuspid valves are open or when they are closed. All right. So dito po naka-open sila kasi yung blood na galing sa atrium kailangang mai-push papunta sa ventricles, di ba? So naka-open yung bicuspid valve. Dito naman sa next photo na ito, naka-close yung bicuspid valve kasi ang nagko-contract is yung ventricle. All right. So yung ventricle ang trabaho niya is para po i-push papunta dun sa mga arteries. No? I-push papunta sa mga arteries or as you can see in this picture, yung aorta, yung blood. Okay? So, ito rin po yung nabanggit natin kanina, no? That the blood functions to ensure a one-way flow of blood. Alright? So, as we can see, isa sa mga tumutuyong sa atin para dun sa pakinabang na yun is the bicuspid valve and also the tricuspid valve kung yung kabilang side yung titignan natin. Another thing na nakakatulong sa atin to keep the blood flowing in a one-way direction is the aortic semilunar valves as we can see right here. So, ulitin po natin, no, kapag nasa atrium yung blood and nagko-contract yung atrium para i-push yung blood papunta sa ventricles, no, nakabukas yung bicuspid valve pero nakasarado yung aortic semilunar valve. Alright? Next, dito sa kabila, kapag naman nakapasok na dito sa ventricles yung blood, kailangan ng ipump ng ventricles papalabas, di ba? Papunta sa mga arteries. So, mag-open, no? mag-open yung aortic semilunar valve to let the blood go through, pero magko-close yung um, bicuspid valve para hindi na mag-flow pabalik dun sa atrium yung blood na ipinasa nga dun sa ventricles nung atrium. Alright? So, ayan. I hope you understood that explanation with these illustrations. Next, we have what is known as the cardiac skeleton. So, dito po ang tatandaan lang natin is itong parts where I've already placed a highlight. So, the cardiac skeleton is a plate of connective tissue. All right, so this connective tissue is referred to as the cardiac skeleton or fibrous skeleton, which is made up of mainly fibrous rings that surround the atrioventricular and semilunar valves to give them support. Okay, so ano po yung mga kailangan nating tandaan dito? Again, the cardiac skeleton is a fibrous connective tissue that would support the atrioventricular and semilunar heart valves. Okay, so this illustration right here shows us the um, location of the cardiac skeleton. All right, so ulitin natin, no, sinosuportahan niya po yung mga aortic and semilunar heart valves, as we can see right here. 
Next is the blood flow through the heart. So if you belong to my lecture classes, ito po yung kailangan yung tandaan. Alright? Mamaya may illustration din naman po tayo para maintindihan natin, no? Yung, ito nga, itong blood flow na to. Kung, nags, kung saan tayo magsisimula and then kung saan pupunta, no? Yung blood as it is being pumped by the heart. Alright? So again, listed here in proper order is the blood flow through the heart. This slide shows us a step-by-step -step map as to how blood flows through the heart. Okay? So, wala po talagang GIF itong original PowerPoint na nanggaling sa CLEs, alright? So, I just added this because I thought this would help you understand better, alright? But let's take a look at this together, alright? So, ayun po. Again, ito yung step-by-step -step process. So, first up, um... Blood from the body no, would enter the superior and inferior vena cava. Okay? So, yung superior vena cava nandito, yung inferior vena cava nandito. Yung blood na nanggaling po sa systemic circulation natin, no? yung blood na nagastos na yung oxygen no? na nanggaling sa iba't ibang parts ng body natin, dito sila papasok sa inferior vena cava and sa superior vena cava. So, what would happen next is that they would enter the right atrium. Okay? So, pagdating sa right atrium, ipapump nung atrium yung blood through the tricuspid valve. Alright? So, lulusot siya dun sa tricuspid valve. And then, papunta sa right ventricle. Okay? Pagdating dun sa right ventricle, alright, mag-open yung pulmonary semilunar valve. Alright? So, pag nag-open po yun, dadaan siya sa mga pulmonary trunk and papunta na po yun sa pulmonary arteries kung saan pupunta sila dun sa lungs. Alright? So, pagpunta sila sa lungs, um, dun na po sila makakakuha ng oxygen. Alright? So, the blood would flow through the lungs and receive oxygen um, from the lungs no? as we have inhaled the oxygen. As we can see right here in this step. After that, pupunta ito sa pulmonary veins. So, imagine, no, nandito sa kabi magkabilang side yung heart. So, pagkatapos na mag-acquire ng oxygen, ng blood from the lungs, no, babalik na sila dito sa heart and they would enter through the pulmonary veins. Alright? So, ayan. Um, after that happens, they would um, go in through the left atrium, which is right here. Right? So, pagdating sa left atrium, mag-open up yung bicuspid valve. All right, and it would push the blood towards the left ventricle, which is right here or nandito sa illustration nito. All right, pagdating dun sa um, left ventricle, all right, tutuloy na siya dun sa se aortic semilunar valve. All right, so mag-open up daw po yung aortic semilunar valve, which is right here sa number 7. All right, and then after that, it would move through the aorta, which is right here dito sa number 8. Or in this GIF, ayan, itong area na ito. After that, it would either go through the coronary arteries, alright? So kapag po yung blood no, na nanggaling sa aorta ay pumunta sa coronary arteries, this would supply blood to the heart itself. Okay? So, it would supply blood to the heart tissue. Pero pwede rin naman po na some of the blood no, would, would go through the aorta and go through the systemic circulation. So, lalabas ulit siya and then deliver ulit to all the other parts of our body. Tapos, repeat cycle. Pag nanggaling dun sa all the other tissues of our body, babalik sa superior and inferior vena cava, and then, alright, pabalik dun sa right atrium, right ventricle, repeat process para i-deliver sa lungs, kumuha ng oxygen, and bumalik galing sa lungs. Alright? So, yun po. I hope with this GIF, and also with this illustration, and also with this flow chart, alright, tatlong magkakaibang um, references na po, no? Tatlong magkakaibang, um, kumbaga visual representation na yung pwede nating tignan. So, I hope um, you understood how blood would flow through the heart. Let's now talk about where the blood supply to the heart would come from. Okay? So, saan po dumadaan yung blood that just finished circulating through everywhere else in the body. So, as usual, um, simula po dito sa slide na to, no, I have already highlighted the important points that you need to focus on. First up, the coronary arteries. No, they originate from the base of the aorta and this would supply blood to the heart wall. So, kailangan natin tandaan, pag sinabing coronary arteries, 
no? Nagsusupply siya ng blood dun sa mismong heart. Next is the left coronary artery. It has three branches. So this one would supply blood to the anterior of the heart wall and left ventricle. All right. So basically, sinasabi lang po dito, no? Kung saan manggagaling or kung saan dadaan yung blood and kung anong segment yung heart yung susuplayan niya ng dugo. So again, the left coronary artery would supply blood to the anterior heart wall and also the left ventricle. Next, this one is quite easy to remember. The right coronary artery supplies blood to the right ventricle. Next, the cardiac veins would drain blood from the cardiac muscle. All right, and then ayun po, again, these are the important parts that you have to remember. So, kung anong veins and kung ano po yung function nila. Again, right coronary artery supply blood to the right ventricle. Cardiac veins drain blood from the cardiac muscle. So, kung halimbawa, um, na use up na po no yung oxygen galing dun sa blood supply, um, dadaan na siya na no, papunta dun sa cardiac veins para ma oxygenate ulit kapag dumaan dun sa blood flow dun din discuss natin kanina. This slide just highlights um, all of the arteries and the veins that we've um, talked about on the previous slides. All right. So again, wag pong kakalimutan no, yung gross anatomical positioning ng mga arteries and veins that is located on the surface of the heart. Let's now talk about the heart wall. So it has three layers, the epi, myo, and endocardium. All right, so the epicardium, this is the outermost layer. All right, the epicardium or the visceral pericardium, this is the outermost layer. Na-discuss na po natin to kanina, di ba? Napag-usapan na natin or nabanggit na natin sandali, no? yung existence ng visceral pericardium. So ayan, dito po, we're finding out that the visceral pericardium could otherwise be referred to as the epicardium. So again, the epicardium is the outermost layer and it is mainly composed of connective tissue, adipose tissue, all right? The salabas po, no? May covering siya na simple squamous epithelium. In the middle, there is the myocardium, all right? So nandito po, no? Yung mga heart muscles or yung cardiac muscles. So these, these are the... Um, Areas, or this is the place no, that helps our um, the, the atrium and the ventricles of our heart to keep pumping, all right? Dahil nandito yung mga muscles that would help them move, all right? And next, the innermost layer is the endocardium, all right? Which has been described to be a smooth inner surface. This slide talks about the cardiac muscle. Medyo familiar na po tayo dito, di ba? When we discussed um, the chapter on tissues and histology, all right? And also that chapter on the muscular system. Nabanggit din po, sandali, di ba? Yung um, cardiac muscles. So again, um, cardiac muscles, they're composed of one centrally located nucleus. As we can see right here in this photo, all right? So iisang nucleus po ang meron sila. Then they have branching cells, as we can see right here. Okay, so and they are rich in mitochondria. So of course, no, they need um, a lot of those places kung saan pwedeng magsynthesize ng ATP. Kasi nga po, di ba? The heart needs to be constantly pumping. So they need that energy supply. So it does make sense that the heart muscles are made up of a lot of mitochondria, or they contain a lot of mitochondria. Next, they are also striated, all right? So they have this arrangement of actin and myosin. So they have striations or yung mga guhit-guhit na makikita natin as we examine them um, upon microscopic examination, all right? And then we have what is known as intercalated discs. So the intercalated discs, these are the places that would connect one cardiac muscle cell to another. So di ba po? Um, a cardiac muscles, may branches sila, alright? Isang cell lang ito, pero meron siyang branches. So, paano ito nagdudoktong sa ba, or paano ito nagiging connected sa katabi niya na cell? It's because of the intercalated disc. 
This slide talks about the stimulation of the heart. So the movement of the blood through the heart is determined by a coordinated sequence of muscle or cardiac muscle contraction. So the atria would contract first, followed by the ventricles. Okay, ulitin po natin, coordinated sequence. Alright, so may pagkakasunod-sunod daw po yung movement no um heart natin all right or the different chambers of our heart so una daw pong magko-contract dapat yung mga atrium and then susunod lang yung mga ventricles so um if you're not familiar no if you're um, kind of like studying the heart for the first time akalain natin na isang kilosan lang po no isang pag-move lang or isang pag-pump lang yung heart but actually these are two different motions magkaiba yung movement ng atria and magkaiba din po yung movement ng ventricles all right so as we can see right here the heart is at rest and then all the chambers are relaxed but when it's time to pump the cardiac muscle cells in the atrial wall are stimulated as action potentials are spread across the atrial wall towards the ventricles. So again, parang um, niri explain lang po nila no, na yung action potentials or kumbaga yung order na mag-uutos dun sa heart muscles natin na kumilos ay magsisimula muna sa atrial wall and then tsaka po siya magtutuloy-tuloy or kumbaga is parang magdo-domino effect papunta sa ventricles. As we can see right here on step three, the cardiac muscle cells in the atrial wall would contract, pushing the blood into the ventricles. And then after that, cardiac muscle cells in the ventricular wall are stimulated as action potential spread. So basically, kapag napansin na daw po nung ventricles natin na kumilos na yung atrium, no? Kung ba guys, parang ito yung go signal nila na kumilos na rin. So mag magko-contract or magpa-pump yung atrium and then tsaka lang magpa-pump yung ventricles. Alright? So the action potential spread across the ventricular wall from the apex of the heart towards its base. Next, after that happens, kikilos na po yung buong ventricle and the ventricular wall would contract, pushing the blood to the great arteries. Alright? So, ayun po. Kung bagay, parang um, in-expand lang natin yung explanation ng sequence na with regards to the pumping motion, una pong kikilos yung atrium and then yung ventricles. This illustration right here just shows us what it looks like if the heart is at rest. So, wala sa mga atrium at wala sa mga ventricles ang kumikilos. But then, when action potentials are stimulated, ang unang kikilos ay yung atria. As you can see right here in this illustration. So, nagko-contract daw po yung atria para i-push yung blood papunta sa ventricles. Notice, naka-open din po no, yung mga valves na nandito. Next, after po na mag-move ng mga atria, no, kakalat yung action potentials papunta dito sa coronary sulcus and dito sa mga ventricular walls para mautusan po yung mga ventricles na mag-contract na rin. As we can see right here on this fifth illustration. So again, wala pong GIF, no? Itong slide na to, nag-insert lang po ako ng GIF for better understanding. But as you can see right here, Unang kumikilos talaga yung atrium and then siya ka lang po magmo-move or magko-contract yung ventricles. So ipo-push muna nung um, atria yung blood galing dito sa um, sa taas no papunta sa ventricles and then saka ipo-push nung ventricles papunta either sa pulmonary or sa systemic circulation. So again, let's focus on the highlighted statements right here. Conduction of the atria and ventricles is controlled by the specialized cardiac muscle cells in the heart wall that form a conduction system. All right. So by conduction system, daw po yung heart kung bakit nagiging coordinated no, or kung bakit maayos yung movement nila. So the conduction system is composed of different nodes. All right. So we have the sinoatrial node the atrioventricular node, the atro, atrio ventricular bundle, and then we have the right and left bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers, all right? So, um, basically, wag po kakalimutan itong mga to. No? You have to be able to enumerate kung ano yung components ng conduction system ng heart. Again, with the help of all these nodes and bundles and Purkinje fibers, sila po yung nagtatrabaho together to keep the heart in a coordinated motion. 
Let's now talk about the different parts of that conduction system. All right. So unain po natin yung sinoatrial node or SA node. So ang SA node daw po ay matatagpuan sa right atrium. Okay? So wag pong kakalimutan yan ha. Yung location ng sinoatrial node is at the right atrium. So this is where action potential would originate. Dito daw po yung unang area, no? Kung saan mare-receive no heart yung command to start moving, all right? So this functions as a pacemaker, all right? And they have a large number of calcium ion channels, all right? So in po, um again, no, with this slide at least na nare-remind tayo na hindi lang po yung skeletal system natin yung nangangailangan ng calcium ions. At least today we're learning that our heart also needs a supply of calcium ions to be able to properly do its job. Next is the atrioventricular node or the AV node. So ito naman po, this is also located at the right atrium, just at the lower portion. Okay? So yung SA or sinoatrial node, nasa medyo mas mataas na area siya ng right atrium. Meanwhile, the atrioventricular node is at the lower portion of the right atrium. So the action potentials from the sinoatrial node is sent to this node. So kumbaga parang pasa-pasa lang po sila. No? So, um, what happens here is that there is a slow rate of action potential conduction that allows the atria to complete their contraction before they, they reach the ventricles. So, dito daw po, no, sa atrioventricular load, medyo mabagal lang yung movement or yung conduction ng action potentials. Kasi po, ang goal dito is patapusin muna yung pag-contract or yung pag ng atria bago dumating sa ventricles. Next is the atrioventricular bundle. So action potentials from the atrioventricular node would travel through the at atrioventricular bundle through the ventricles. So ito po, pagdating sa AV node, no, dadaan siya dun sa AV bundle or atrioventricular bundle. So pagdating sa atrioventricular bundle, um, ito na po yung daanan para makarating yung action potentials papunta sa ventricles. So basically, dumaan muna siya sa atrium, alright, after matapos mag-contract ng atrium, um, mula sa AV node, papadaanin niya yung action potential. Sa AV bundle, pagdating sa AV bundle, no, i-deliver niya yung action potential sa ventricles para mautusan na yung ventricles to start contracting. Next, we have what are known as the Purkin G fibers. So the Purkin G fibers, they pass to the apex of the heart or yung pointed na bottom portion ng heart na nakaturo sa left. No? Nasa apex daw po ito. And then it extends to the cardiac muscle of the ventricle walls. All right. So again, we would be able to find the Purkin G fibers simula sa apex until dun sa ventricle walls. So right here, action potentials are rapidly delivered to all the cardiac muscles of the ventricle. So dito po, kailangan medyo mas mabilis na yung pagkilos ng action potentials para uh, mautusan po yung buong ventricle to forcefully contract. All right. So again, this is something that we, we would be able to observe when we talk about the Purkin G fibers. Alright, so this slide right here just talks about the step-by-step um, -step process of the action potential path through the heart. So um, basically, um, inayos lang po nila in order no, yung um, daanan ng action potentials na diniscuss natin in the previous slide. So again, mauuna po na magi or magi start up yung action potentials sa sinoatrial node, which is at the upper portion of the right atrium. Ipapasa niya dun sa bandang baba which is the atrioventricular node, which is found at the lower portion of the right atrium. After that, um, dadaan po ito dun sa atrioventricular bundle and dadaan siya sa left and, or right and left bundle branches para ma-deliver niya papunta sa ventricles. And right here, we have the Purkin G fibers that actually delivers the action potentials to the rest of the ventricles.
This slide right here just shows us an illustration of the conduction system. Ulitin natin magsisimula sa SA node, pupunta sa AV node, and the deliver niya dadaan dito sa AV bundle. Pagdating sa AV bundle, no, simula dito sa apex, andito yung mga Perkin G fibers, i-spread out na niya yung action potentials dito sa um, ventricular walls. And then magkocontract na rin po yung ventricular walls. This slide right here just quickly mentions the electrocardiogram, all right? The electrocardiogram, otherwise referred to as the EKG or ECG, all right? So the ECG, this records the electrical events in the heart, all right? So yun na pag-usapan natin kanina na action potentials na dumadaan sa iba't ibang mga nodes and fibers, no? Um, Na-observe po natin yung mga yun, yung mga movements na yun through an ECG. So this is able to diagnose cardiac abnormalities, all right? So if there's something wrong with the conduction and movement of the heart, we would be able to find that out with the help of the electrocardiogram. This slide talks about the cardiac cycle. This is a summative description of all the events that occur during one single heartbeat. So the heart is actually a two-sided pump. All right, nabanggit din natin to sa simula, di ba? The heart is a two-sided pump with the atria being the primers. Kaya sila yung unang kihilos, di ba? And then the ventricles would become the actual pumps. Kasi nga, di ba, mas forceful yung movement nila and mas malayo yung areas kung saan dapat nilang maipump your blood. This slide talks about heart sounds. So heart sounds are produced due to the closure of the heart valves. So yung mga heart valves daw po, kapag nagsasarado sila, yun yung sound na naririnig natin. So a stethoscope is used to hear heart sounds. The first heart sound would make what is known as a lub sound, and the second is a dub sound. So lub dub lub dub. So first heart sound is due to the closure of the atrioventricular valves, and the second heart sound is due to the closure of the semilunar valve. So ito po yung mahalagang kailangan nating tandaan na tandaan ha. So yung first um sound na marinig natin, it is because nag close daw po yung atrioventricular valves. Yung second sound na marinig natin, ito daw po ay dahil nag-close na yung semilunar valves. Right? So that's where the sounds of our heart would come from. This slide right here just shows us an illustration where we may be able to hear those different heart valves, their locations, saan po natin pwedeng itapat yung stethoscope for us to hear them clearly. On this slide, ang kailangan po nating tandaan ay yung mga numbers, alright? So first up, we have the term stroke volume, alright? So this is the volume of blood pumped per ventricle per contraction. So per heartbeat, the blood is capable of pumping 70 milliliters of blood. All right? So wag pong kakalimutan yon. In one heartbeat or in one contraction of a ventricle, 70, 70 milliliters of blood is being pumped. Next, we have the term heart rate. So this is the number of heartbeats in one minute. Nakailang contract, nakailang beat daw po yung ventricles in one minute. So the normal or the average um, heart rate is 72 beats per, per minute. This slide talks about the baroreceptor reflex. So the baroreceptor reflex is a mechanism of the nervous system that plays an important role in regulating heart function. So um, shown here are the different baroreceptors. First up, um, they're capable of monitoring blood pressure in the aorta and carotid arteries. All right. So changes in blood pressure could cause changes in the frequency of action potentials. All right. So yung blood pressure daw po natin, no? Pwedeng maapektuhan yung conduction of action potentials. So this involves the medulla oblongata. So ang nagtatabaho daw po, no? A part ng brain natin that works to, ayun nga po, to kind of like help us with our barrel receptor to monitor our blood pressure. This mainly happens at the medulla oblongata. 
Next, we have the chemoreceptor reflex. So as the name implies, chemoreceptor, this involves chemical regulation of the heart function. All right? So kung kanina sa baroreceptor, ang nire-regulate niya or ang nade-detect niya is yung blood pressure, dito naman po, no? Um, it detects certain chemicals, and certain chemicals can affect heart rate and stroke volume. All right, so heart rate again, this is the number of heartbeats per one minute. Again, ang normal po is 72, no, or approximately 72 beats per minute. So, stroke volume naman po. This is the amount of blood in milliliters that is pumped in one contraction of the ventricle. So again, ang normal amount of stroke volume po, no, is approximately 70, 70 milliliters per one beat or per one contraction of the ventricle. Let's now talk about some of the most common heart diseases. First up is coronary artery disease. So this decreases the blood supply to the heart. So ano po bang nangyayari during coronary artery disease? The coronary arteries are narrowed for some reason. So again, if you would remember, no, um, we talked about earlier the coronary arteries or yung arteries na magsusupply ng blood to the heart walls, di ba? So, um, sometimes unhealthy diet could lead to the deposition of cholesterol sa walls ng heart natin. So, ayan, that could be one of the reasons why there is narrowing or pagliit ng daanan ng arteries natin. So, again, that's what happens during coronary artery disease. Next is myocardial infarction, which is commonly referred to as heart attack. Right, so myocardial infarction is due to the closure of one or more coronary arteries. So, dito daw po, um, may mga barado na na coronary arteries. So, may mga areas daw po na, na hindi na nasusuplayan ng dugo yung parts ng no heart natin. Alright, so as it says here on the next bullet, areas of the cardiac muscle are lacking adequate blood supply and they start to die, which would lead to infarction. So, namamatay daw po yung mga cardiac muscles na hindi nasusuplayan ng dugo. So, ayan, um, constant, um, or if medyo marami na sila, no, it would lead to myocardial infarction or a heart attack. Now, let's talk about the different procedures as to how um, we would provide solutions to the diseases that was mentioned earlier. First up is angioplasty. So, sa angioplasty, but this would um, open the blocked blood vessels, as we can see right here in this first GIF. So, Go halimbawa, ito daw yung blood vessel na may deposition ng um, lipids, no, excess cholesterol. They would kind of like insert a tube that would expand or kind of like open up like a balloon para i-push daw po or i-open yung area na sumisikip na. Next is a stent. So stents are structures that are inserted to keep the vessels open, as we can see right here in this illustration. Again, in this um, GIF, no, we have a blood vessel that has been blocked by plaques of cholesterol. So dito, they would insert the tube, the balloon would open up, and then may may iwan po na mesh looking or net looking structure that would keep the area open. So, tatanggalin na yung tube, tapos may iiwan yung net dun sa loob. So, that is a stent. Next, a bypass. A bypass or a coronary bypass is a procedure that would reroute the blood away from the blocked arteries. So, basically, gagawa daw sila ng bagong daanan para, um, ayun nga, maiwasan yung mga areas na barado and mabigyan pa rin ng blood supply yung areas na, ayun nga, kinulang ng blood supply due to the blockage. Alright? So, ayan po. Um, again, this slide does not have any GIF, so I just found these GIFs online and inserted them here for better understanding. If you belong to my lecture classes, that ends our discussion on the heart. Thank you so much for listening. If you belong to my laboratory classes, let's now proceed to the um, study of microscopic anatomy of the heart. This slide is already familiar to us. Simula po nung nag-aaral tayo ng tissues and histology and also this was um, also mentioned no, um, when we were studying the muscular system. So this is what the 
cardiac muscles would look like under microscopic examination. So as we can see, you know, we would be able to find um, different muscle cells. Again, each cardiac muscle cell is composed of one nucleus that is found in the middle or centrally located. Then each cell is branching. That was some bowel cell is connected to the other cell with the help of the intercalated discs. This slide right here shows us a high power objective view of the cardiac muscle. So dito po mas nakikita na natin kung nasaan yung mga intercalated disc. We're also able to see the striations because of the arrangement of actin and myosin, all right? And ayan po ang bawat isang nganto, these are the cardiac muscle fibers. And also shown here are the different branches. This slide right here shows us a microscopic anatomy of the heart wall. So, kanina po, di ba, sa discussion natin, um, ito yung illustration na pinakita. So, the epicardium is the outermost layer. It's composed of uh, connective tissues, adipose tissues, and a simple squamous epithelium on the outside. Um, ang epicardium po, this is otherwise referred to as the visceral pericardium because this is directly connected to the heart muscle. Uh, Next spot, in the middle is the myocardium. So this is what it looks like upon microscopic observation. And again, um, on the innermost layer, we have what is known as the endocardium. All right, so the endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart wall, and it has been described to be smooth. All right, so again, ito po yung microscopic appearance ng epi, myo, and endocardium. This slide right here shows us a specific segment of the heart, most likely the ventricles, wherein we may be able to find the Purkin G fibers, all right? So the Purkin G fibers are usually found, um, nabanggit na natin sa ventricles, but more likely at the endocardium or the innermost layer, all right? So nakabaliktad po itong illustration na to, ha? This is the endocardium or yung pinakalooban, ito yung myocardium, or kung saan nandito yung karamihan ng cardiac muscle fibers. Also, notice that the myocardium right here in this sample is very thick. This looks like, um, this looks like, if not low power, scanning objective lang yung ginamit. So, ayan po, di ba? Sobrang kapal ng myocardium, which makes sense because this is most likely the ventricle, wherein, ayan nga po, they have um, thicker walls and they have more muscular components. Kasi nga, no, they need strong muscles for um, stronger contraction. And then dito sa baba ng myocardium, uh, most likely dito na natin makikita yung epicardium or yung outside. All right. So again, on the inside of the ventricles or um, heart wall of the ventricles, that's where we may be able to find the Purkin G fibers. This ends our discussion on the heart. Again, I am Aurel Enriquez. Thank you so much for listening.